All right, hello there, I, I uh, CS 3 u folks. Uh, you watched a, a video of someone else sort of explaining from scratch the uh, idea of arrays, and I'm going to go through the note. Hopefully you've got this note saved and you've got it somewhere so that when you look back and wonder about arrays and uh, all that business that you've got something to look at. Um, I'm going to try and explain it pretty quick. Uh, mostly you're going to understand arrays by using arrays in uh, the exercises and in the programming assignment that's coming up and it'll take a little while but the idea an array is a variable that holds several values of the same data type um, and we saw a lot of examples where this would have been nice in our lunch program geez it would have been nice if we could have just had all the lunches values the lunch values going in into the same uh, array and we could call them lunch one, lunch two, lunch three, lunch four. Well, there is such a thing and it's called an array. And there's a couple of different ways to use them. And this is just personal style, whatever way you want to. So um, data type, square brackets, array name. Data type is integer or string or whatever variable type you want. You could actually have an array of consoles if you wanted to. Uh, but as soon as you see the square brackets, you know that we were talking about an array. And the square brackets can appear in front of the, the uh, variable name as well. So, for instance, this declares an array of integers. This de declares an array of strings called name uh, names. Notice we don't know how long the array is here. We don't know any of the values. We know nothing like that. That's just declaring it. Um, and the syntax for initializing or actually creating the array is once we have declared it, then we can uh, use this um, keyword new to make uh, the array itself. So where bound is the number of items. Notice now we have this, we're going to decide how many entries we're going to have in the array. And notice that the data type stays the same. So for an, for an example, marks which we uh declared up here we initialized to have um 27 um members in the array 27 elements in the array and uh notice we don't have any values yet what's strange about about this is java actually picks values uh when we once we create an array, it would actually pick all of these marks to be zero, and all the strings to be nulls. But we'll see that again later. A uh, syntax for combining the array declaration in initialization. This is usually what we do. So like this half of it declared it, like we set up here. That's the declaration. This part initialized it and created the array. So we can combine those, and that's normally what we do. So for, for instance, int marks equals new int 27 sets up an array of integers called marks. And now we can start assigning values to the arrays using their index value. There's lots of different ways. This is the first one. So individually, mark 0 equals 87, mark 1 equals 62, and this would represent you know, the first two elements of the array since there's this weird thing about an, an array starting to count at zero, which shouldn't surprise you too much because the string handling started counting at zero as well. So, so you know, arrays and strings, kind they kind of go together, and, and uh, this shouldn't surprise you too much. Um, method two is assigning a bunch of values at once. So, so if we had an uh, array name that was already declared, we could give it a whole bunch of values by putting them in curly brackets. The curly bracket shows the start of an array, and then the elements of the array are separated by commas. So obviously days of the week is a, is a string array, and we have assigned the three values Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Um, notice then, Java knows that days of the week zero is the first one in our list. Days of the week one is the second one in our list, and so on. In the last example, array name, 
the array name is days of the week. Monday is called an element of the array. And zero is called the index. So um, array, array name is almost like, if you, if, if you want an analogy, it's almost like a street, right? And the elements are the people who live on the street. And the index is kind of like the address of the houses. So the address of the houses, house one, house two, house three, house four, and the elements are the people or things that live inside those boxes. And we'll see a picture of that uh, by the end of the note. Because note, all arrays know their length. You can use or find the length of an array using the syntax array name dot length. Again, this is similar to strings. Remember, all strings knew their own length by using uh, string name dot length with quotations, right? But there are no brackets for the array length. It's just array name dot length, no brackets. In the last example, days of the week dot length, days of the week dot length, well, how many elements are there? One, two, and three. The house addresses or the index values are zero, one, and two. Okay, uh, here comes a picture. So, when we have this is was the declaration and the declaration this is going to be called rest all array and it's uh an array that has type string and so the computer knows oh i'm going to make room for this rest all array and it's going to be all strings notice it doesn't know how many it doesn't know how many houses are living on this street yet we know there's a street called rest all array uh, and then at this at this stage when it says rest all array equals new string, and then there's a five there, that says, okay, we've got five houses. The index, or the address values, the index values zero, one, two, three, and four, five houses all together, because we start counting at zero. And then we access individual elements by their index value. We can, we reference what's inside the house by their address. So if I, were to make this assignment rest all array three equals third what does that do that says okay i'm going to look up this array and in address three which is here i'm going to assign that value third and then we can start sort of talking about the entire street which is the entire array uh, or individual elements or or whatever and it says there are a lot of ways to declare initialize and assign array elements and you need practice, okay? And that's what's next is um, is some exercises. I'm actually, hopefully you haven't turned me off yet because I'm going to do the first exercise with you. The very first exercise, and you got this from Midmodo, is to read 10 numbers from the keyboard and store them in an array. Um, 10 uh, numbers from the keyboard. Well, how am I going to do that? First of all, I'm going to get a new... Um, I'm going to go with just an... Uh, this is array exercises. And I'm going to set up a input stream reader just for funsies and practice. Maybe now you're fast forwarding me, I don't know. And that's going to come from the keyboard. And then I set up a buffered reader. That's oh, attached to that input stream reader. Um, and then I want to read in 10 numbers. So 10 numbers, well, I'm going to want an array of integers, say, and remember, the square brackets can go there or here, not both. New int, and then the size of the array, remember. And how am I, how am I going to do this? Well, I know that I, I need 10 elements, right? So I, that sounds like a for loop to me for um, int i equals 0. Because I want to start at 0 because, remember, the elements start counting at at uh, zero and then I want to go from I while I is less than um, 
and I'm going to just put in number dot length here. Why would I do that? It's so that if I wanted to make this a bigger array, all I would have to do is change that number right there, and this code will still work. I plus plus. And there's my curly brackets, and then I'm going to fill them with uh, br dot get um, read line. Uh oh, read line. Uh, you know what's going to happen here is we need to parse this number because it comes in as a string. I need to parse it to an integer, so I'm going to do that. All right, number subscript i. It'll start at zero, right? Starts at zero. And then I want to parse the input that I read in from the keyboard into an integer, 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 parse, int. And that looks good. So hopefully that'll all work. Um, I might get if I if I run this right now, what's going to happen? I'm, first of all, I'm going to save because that's just silly not saving that just in case. Um, and I'm going to run it. Right? What's the error? Uh, input stream cl uh, reader class not found. Did you forget to import? Yes, I did forget. So remember, import java dot io dot star. Run. Oh, another error. This method can throw the I.O. exception, blah, 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 blah. So I should maybe put that in a try catch. Why not try this? And I'm going to catch uh, the I.O. exception. And who cares what we call that? I.O. exception. And I'm going to put out a message system dot out dot print line um, some problem okay so let's try that again uh, three no no prompt here bad coding but ten numbers okay ten numbers that's it I entered ten numbers so who cares well let's print them out right so so in they go, but there's no printing out. So let's have a little loop that will print them out. And notice I can use I again because once this loop ends, I is available to use again. Number dot length I plus plus. And then I'm going to go system dot out dot print maybe i'll just print here instead of uh print lining so they'll all put in one line so it'll so we can see them all at the same time so i'm going to print number i and then plus a little space just so we can see them save run okay so uh enter enter i should have some a prompt here but i guess i didn't and then there they are. Isn't that great? So now um, we've got a way to access a whole bunch of numbers at the same time. For instance, we could input all this stuff at one time, then do whatever processing we needed to, like reading in six lunches for the week and then ca calculating the average or whatever. Um, very useful. And so that's the first, the, the first code, right? So you're going to copy that. Paste it in there, and then you're on with the rest of the exercises, okay? Um, have fun with them. Ask lots of questions. Good luck.